Hello, this is a short video of uh, Sweep Arena and uh, it's morning 7 a.m. and I'm just trying to uh, demonstrate what it does in it and what it doesn't do. Um, so I'll just, you know, before showing you the bandpass filter uh, and that's and the problems there, uh, I'll just show you how this works. So um, here I have, um, I'll just take a minute to pick this up. Okay, so I have a detector port here which is connected to the 8307. Uh, this is the HF out and this one here is the VHF uh, out. So, and this is a serial cable which goes all the way here and comes in here. It's actually a USB to serial cable and that's my computer there. So, um, I don't know why it's aliasing there, but nevertheless. So now uh, what I do is um, in order to make this work, first I start with my Superino software here, and uh, this is already connected, and I calibrate this. So it's a slightly longish procedure of calibrations. So I'll just move this a little closer. So first thing that happens is I have to fix the VHF frequency of the crystal oscillator here, and to do that, what I do is I take my FT. 817 and I go up to the VHF and there you can see the crystal oscillators leak coming through and that's good enough for me and that's actually at 11994 uh, so I enter that off to my thing here Right, so that's done. Next thing is now, at this point, what would happen is that uh, the the sweeperinos would be heterodyning the SI570 with the VHF crystal oscillator. And uh, what I'll do is, I'll find out what frequency that is going at. So, I connect the HF out now to... and to the frequency counter and you can see the frequency is now 10065 so I enter that here 10065 and see now what has happened is it has internally calculated the crystal oscillator frequency of SI570 so that's set now in fact I can check that out so I can check that out here by going down to 10 and there you can see that, right, it's almost there. There's some problem with the frequency calibration software, but it's almost at 10 now, exactly. So that's done. And the next thing that, that I do here is I calibrate the power meter. So I connect an RF power out to, to the oscilloscope which is here, let's see, mm, why is this not working, oh sorry, can you take it one here, okay there, now here is very interesting, there are, there are these glitches here that uh, might be responsible for the sort of uh, stuff that we are seeing on the um, sweeper output, but I'll, I'll come to that in a bit, so, uh, as you can see here, this is on 50, uh, 50 millivolts per division, so uh, it's approximately about between 150 and 170 uh, millivolts between peak, peak to peak. Uh, uh, sorry, between the ground and the peak, so that's what I enter here next. 165 millivolts. I calibrate this power, so it's... Um, I'm sorry, I have to... What one has to do now is... Having measured this on the oscilloscope, we feed the same power from the HF port to the detector port and we now set this in, so it's saying that it is actually minus 5.6 dB. Then now what it does is, uh, in the next step here, it steps through the H entire HF range 
and uh, calibrates that is takes a reference reading of this I'll actually show you the reference reading in a little bit as soon as it completes that that's completed that okay now actually I'll move this a little and show you if you see this graph here right the the previous graph has not cleared up so you see this black graph here uh, this is going from 0 to 60 megahertz and as you can see that the output is pretty constant you know right throughout here uh, next we calibrate the VHF so I connect the VHF output to the detector now okay, that's done and run the VHF calibration so now it measures everything here but now if you see the VHF calibration that's not going so smoothly I'll show you the curve in a bit as soon as this completes you can see the reading here this is running through the reading here uh, done calibration VA. okay then I'll save this entire thing okay so that's it uh, we have done calibrating the entire thing here and now I can use this so next what I do is I take this out and that's a that's a 14 megahertz bandpass filter here uh, I have a picture of this separately so I just plug this in here directly between these two ports and now I do a scan here which is a sweep centered around let's say 12 megahertz and I choose a sweep of 10 and 600 steps so that goes uh, it also warns you that you know earlier you had left the cable on VHF so uh, you have to you know move the cable out anyways so now you can see the thing being built up and that's it so now you can see this uh, that's the red one here above is the reference and uh, these are the annoying uh, harmonic responses that we see here and this is the fundamental 14 response uh, it, it, it actually gives you a reading here of the frequency there's a bug in the software which is why it's actually putting a minus on the fraction here too as you can see this but actually as I move this it reads frequency as well as uh, the power uh, and I'll just show you this when you're doing a sweep you set a center frequency in kilohertz um, and you can choose a sweep size and the sweep size is actually down to 1 kilohertz so 1 kilohertz 1 3 10 kilohertz 30 100 300 etc all the way to 50 megahertz and you could uh, if you're in a big hurry you could do steps of 30 300 600 etc but I have never found the 30 and 100 really to be much useful and then I also can use this as a signal generator and um, then you know set it at wherever for example I'll set this back to 14 I'll set this to 14 and you can see that the power reading is now minus 8 dBm as opposed to minus um, you know 5.6 dBm for the reference so that means that the loss of this filter is about 2 dB 2.5 dB which is pretty good so uh, that's about uh, the software and I can also save this picture so I can save this picture as uh, whatever let's say scan1.bmp here and this gets saved so there's already one there okay fine but nevertheless so that's the software and that's the hardware um, and uh, that's just about it thanks